For the fruit of the tree of life is the love of God that must be shed forth through the hearts of the children of men. You are the bearers of this fruit, my beloved. For you, cherubim's flaming swords need never fall. This flaming sword falls only on those who remain in their sins, and when his sword falls, it is death. However, for you who have followed that still, small voice to its source, who have sought to live the laws and to know of their truth, there is no flaming sword, no mystery. For you, the tree of life, will no longer be surrounded in mist, and you shall partake of its fruit. Which fruit is my love, which is shed forth in the hearts of the children of men, when the hardness has been overcome by fulfilling that first and great commandment, which commandment was given for your glory and your redemption. Know this, ye sons of light, that through you also must the darkness of the earth be overcome. And this great darkness must first be overcome right within yourselves. As you banish the darkness in your own minds and thoughts and hearts, so that no vibrations go out in negative form, nor in opposition to the rays of holy light, you enter into the greatest work possible to participate in, in this sphere of action. This is the greater works of which I spake unto mine apostles of old. This banishing darkness from one's being means also to overcome all light-mindedness, which is but the pastime of those without thought. It means also my children to triumph over fears and all negatives. When the darkness is overcome, then faith is perfected and matured, and becomes knowledge, and knowledge is power. Know this surely, despair cometh because of inequity. Inequity means a lack of inner quiet, or as your original language would have expressed it, a lack of inner quiety. It is a lack of that contact with the divine power of God within. It is the outward racing of one's thoughts hither and yon in great disquietude. It is a lack of the great peace acquired by the practice of being still and knowing God. Learn to be still and entering into the kingdom of your soul, gain your strength and sustenance from me. I am their author and their source within you, yea, I, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who was crucified upon the cross, and the source of this light of Christ, which is given to abide in you. For my realm is it shed forth under my jurisdiction, even according to the will of God the Father. Yea, do all thou doest in the name of the Lord, and call upon the name of the Son forevermore, that you may be blessed in all your doing, and that I may increase this divine light within you, even according to your power to receive. When dark and evil forces seek to engulf, to confuse, to overwhelm, distress or destroy you, draw near to me and call upon the Father in my name, and thus find your peace and security neath my outstretched wings, which wings are but symbolical of my outstretched power. Then giving thanks that I have heard and resting in the security of my love, let gratitude sing that song of vibrant ecstasy within your soul, and behold, the darkness is gone and the Son of Righteousness arises with healing in his wings. These journeys into the realm of dark and light are quite necessary, my children. They are necessary so that each of you might find your place, and of your own strength learn to hold that place, ye that you might overcome the darkness and become bearers of eternal light. When you first remove the seal of blindness and the gift of vision is given, and you comprehend this greater work, then angels are sent by my hand to attend you. Sometimes there are hosts or legions of them attending you. You may not see them, but you will feel their presence and the strength of their sustaining hands. You will feel the music of their glorifying song of divine power, the encouragement of their unheard voices, the love of their hearts. And as they attend you, that divine song of ecstasy begins to vibrate in a singing echo of triumph and joy and light within your own heart. This singing song of ecstasy, of gratitude and thankfulness, is my light swinging into power within you. The darkness comprehendeth not this light, and flees from it. And they who reject this light are under condemnation, and their condemnation is, that they are walking in darkness at noonday, and hear not my voice, nor know me, and are left unto themselves. As you, beloved, develop that light from within and learn to stand alone in your own strength, the angels, directed from my throne to attend you, are withdrawn, and are you and you are left to stand in your own strength, that you might become strong and sure, and that you might learn to discern between the darkness and the light. 
it is also that you might learn of the power of God and the power of mammon or earth. Again and again, mayhap, these blessed ones are sent to lift you up and give you support and strength. For from the time you receive the vision of this divine work, there are special ones assigned to assist you until you become one with the light and find your own place and learn to walk wherein in your own strength. Yea, how else could you become strong in the light and be master of it unless you learn to overcome the darkness? Each of you, my children, must learn to stand alone. Each of you must learn to walk alone. You must learn to pick yourselves up and step forth into your own strength and walk out into these glorified realms of eternal light. As an earth-born child first finds its strength and steps forth at first in trembling anxiety, know that you must learn to stand upright and walk. And as you progress, the whole universe looks on and rejoices in your final achievement as you step up beyond the mortal stage of infant progress and childish human laws. As you stand upright, you view with higher vision and new worlds await the treading of your feet. It is even as when an infant takes its first baby step, which experiences has been repeated as many times upon this earth as a child has learned to walk. The family, standing back, gives encouragement and breathless solicitude to the wee one beginning the great adventure of a new life with its faltering, halting steps. It takes but a few steps alone to give the little one confidence and to reveal to it the power contained in its toddling feet as it masters the science of standing upright and walking forth into the new realms and conditions. The whole family rejoices in the thrill of the baby's achievement as another member of humanity steps forth from infancy into childhood. Your stepping forth into the light, my beloved ones, is far greater than the infant rising from its crawling position to stand and walk erect. Yea, all the heavens rejoice in your achievement as new and greater scopes become your heritage in your eternal progress and advancement. It is at this point twixt the rising and the falling, or the darkness and the light, that the mortal attitudes and mind of groveling, crawling, earthbound man are left behind. Thus standing upright in the majesty of your own soul, you can step forth in your march toward glorified divinity, the life more abundant. This is the life I promised, and this promise must be fulfilled unto you who live by the higher laws to a higher kingdom, which is not of this world. To you is the victory of fulfillment, if you will but follow me, for my arms are open wide to receive you in my eternal love. So you see, my beloved, as you overcome the darkness in your own selves and cast out the fears and jealousies, you can begin to be endowed with divine power. For as you overcome the darkness within yourself, you will receive power to help rend the veil of darkness that covers the earth. This is the task for which your strength was developed and for which it was destined. Yea, this is the work at hand. Come ye, my children of the new day, and lifting up your hearts, banish the darkness, yea, banish it by love and praise and deep gratitude. And as this song of ecstasy arises in your hearts, you will know that I am there. Know that it is the singing song of gratitude and great outpouring love and joy that contacts my powers and brings them into immediate action right within you. Yea, for you, my beloved children of light, there are no mysteries. The mist trees are for those who cling to old ways and old paths and walk in the tradition of their fathers. The mist is for those who have no desire, nor will to ask, to seek, or to knock, nor any faith in me, nor in my promises, nor in my great power of fulfillment. But for you seeking ones, the mist is dissolved, and the great mystery is revealed as the great tree of life. Yea, the great mist of darkness that has covered my earth for ages will be dispelled in you. For when I come, you will see as you are seen, clothed in darkness or clothed in light. And as you are clothed, so will you appear, and so will all things appear unto you. To you who have not overcome the darkness, the great light of my coming will, will be but darkness unto you, if that remains your choice, and you love the darkness rather than the light. Yea, if you are thus clothed in darkness, you will be blinded by the approaching light, and will fight with your feeble strength and your blinded bigotry, until you yourselves fall in complete exhaustion and utter impotency. For none can fight my light any more than by their feeble hands they can hold back the rays blazing from the noonday sun. 
You dearly beloved ones who are beginning to array yourselves in light, you will see also as you are seen, and the light will be the beholding powers of your own exalted vision. So shall you see, just as you are seen, by my holy ones who are even now sent to gather out the tares of the wheat that they might be removed from the earth. The tares are they who have no part with me, who have rejected the light of Christ, which was given to abide in them, and who see no glory in the great approaching light. These are they who are walking in darkness at noonday. The only acceptable sacrifice acceptable to God from the days of my ministry to this present day has been, as I informed you, the sacrifice of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. From that day on an offering of blood has been an abomination, though appointed anciently in symbology of my sacrifice upon the cross. In its appointed time, the symbol was fulfilled, the sacrifice for which the symbol was appointed, for I came and fulfilled the ancient law. Thereafter such sacrifices were forever ended, and were no longer acceptable before the throne of God. Neither has the sacrifice of one's time, services, his wealth and offering been able to take the place of the appointed sacrifice henceforth required at the hand of man. Know this, beloved, the only complete, acceptable sacrifice is the appointed one which our Father hath ordained, even the sacrifice or offering of a contrite spirit and a broken or open heart. This sacrificial offering alone involves a complete surrender of the self to me. It demands the sacrifice of your pride, your personal opinions, your bigotry, your errors and mistake. Yes, this is the only acceptable offering, the only sacrifice worthy of the fulfilled promise of my life sacrificed upon the cross for you. Even the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, this sacrifice of my life was the pattern by which your own lives could be perfected. My life surrender but portrays the offering of the little mortal self, the complete sent surrender of your misguided wills to the great and holy will of your Father. This sacrifice that is required of you crucifies your selfish traits, your sensual lust, and fulfills the utter surrender of even your pain and anguish and suffering and heartbreaks to me. Those who think that they can serve me fully in any other way than by this appointed offering of a broken or breaking heart, and in a spirit of humble and subdued devotion, are laboring in vain. This sacrifice is the complete surrender of your will to the will of God. No higher positions that feed your pride, no endless years of service, no tithe or offering, no filling of missions can fulfill the great law, nor provide the necessary sacrifice of acceptability. These services and offerings are but minor contributions, though you give all your time and your talents, though often you will help you to find the way to offer up your broken hearts to me, they are not the fulfilling of the law. Of themselves they hold no power upon my altar, for these services are not the appointed offering ordained at the hand of my Father. And until you have given the self or your personal will in complete and utter surrender, in contriteness of spirit and your broken or open heart, your works have no power or efficacy, and your sacrifices are mostly vain as far as the fulfilling of the law is concerned. Only the complete surrender of the self or your own will through the open heart and with a humble spirit can fulfill the required law of sacrifice and prepare you for the anointing of the divine light of Christ. The release of your broken heart contains all the outpouring burdens of your past mistakes, your pride and weakness and failures, and the complete and utter surrender of your immature erring will. When you, beloved, have learned the power of this required sacrifice and abide by this sacred law, your mortal selves will step aside and you will be prepared to receive the divine anointing of light and the joy of my fullness. You will no longer be afflicted with the deadly eye disease, capital I, that have blinded my children for ages, for you will be healed. Yea, my dearly beloved, you will become open channels through which my love can pour forth to help bless and heal the world. Know this, my chosen and elect, the easiest, simplest way to get the right attitude in which to offer up your broken heart is through a daily, hourly practice of that first and great commandment. For in it are all the keys of righteousness and the divine keys of fulfillment. 